Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel Wild Like a Flower Gardening. I'm bringing you outside to do some more invasive species ID. So in this video we're doing a very brief follow-up on autumn olive because I promised you we would take another look at them when they started to flower. And if you know what they smell like you may have smelled it in the air recently because the time is now. So let's go have a look at them so that we can be better stewards in our own backyards. So if you blindfolded me right now, I would probably still be able to tell you that there's an autumn olive creeping up behind me because they smell so strong. I think I would describe the smell as like a jasmine vanilla. I haven't really heard too many professionals describe the fragrance um, other than it's just very strong, very floral. I find it very lovely and very sweet. Um, obviously this smell it's indicative of a problem. So once it hits my nose this time of year, I'm like, hmm. And then I immediately go straight into heartbreak because it's a reminder of how invasive and how much of a problem autumn olive has grown to be. You know, this smell being so lovely, it's probably why it has been a commonly used plant in landscaping because it is so nice. But I can probably find you some native shrub varieties that smell just as good to replace it with. So if you're buying autumn olive still, you shouldn't be and you're buying it for the smell, we could probably find you something better. Um, but it is important as land managers or people just trying to get your own property together to know what it smells like, because if you can identify it by its smell, you can tell you have a problem without having to get all the way up to it. So autumn olive, it's flowering now. And what do we know about flowers, right? Well, they're going to turn into something and they're going to turn into a berry. And the problem with autumn olive, and like I said in my last video, is that this berry is an important food source for our songbirds. And so it's important to be feeding our songbirds. We don't want them to starve. But the problem lies in them eating the berries of these invasive species. Because when they eat, what else do you think they do? Poop. And so they're going to be landing on fence rows, they're going to be landing in other natural areas, and they're going to be dropping those autumn olive, multiflora, Japanese honeysuckle, privet, Japanese barberry, you name it. They're going to be dropping those seeds and then planting them there to establish themselves. That's probably how this autumn olive came to be here inside the interior of the forest. There's a lot of it up at the parking area because it likes disturbed areas, but it's also in here, which is really sad. So I'm going to show you guys what these flowers look like since I can't give you smell-o-vision and I'm also going to give you a better look at these leaves now that they have fully leafed out. So as you can see here, autumn olive has these off-white looking flowers and they're usually in a cluster of a few of them. Now they have four petals each and even though they're small, they do pack a rather fragrant punch. And you can see here on the twig and the undersides of these leaves that there's lots of speckling happening. And this is a really great opportunity to see how silvery the undersides of these leaves are as compared to the tops. Here is the top of the leaf here and the bottom of the leaf. Stark difference. So that's a huge identifying characteristic. That's what I learned in my dendrology class um, is that the silvery shine underneath the leaves of autumn olive is very indicative of autumn olive as compared to another shrub. So one of my favorite things to do this time of year, since it's not a very good time to try to go in and remove autumn olive, is I will trim a lot of these branches off and go home and stick them in a vase and enjoy the smell of autumn olive in the comfort of my own home, while knowing that I at least removed quite a few berries out of the system um, so that way they don't go on to become more autumn olive shrubs. So when I say that it's not a good time to do your removal efforts, this time of year, this shrub is focusing all the energy from the roots up into leafing out. So if you were to cut it back, all it's really going to do is re-sprout at the base. When you want to do some attack on autumn olive and any other shrubs, you want to do it a little bit later in the season when it's more important for it to be taking energy from the leaves, from photosynthesizing, and sending it down to the roots versus the opposite of taking it up top. So if you want to do your most damage, focus your efforts more in July, um, August, September. And if it's really bad, I highly recommend that you guys contact um, a contractor in your area 
or um, maybe like your NRCS office, soil and water, get involved with some sort of government agency or private contractor that can give you guidance if you have such serious autumn olive on your property to fight because this is a battle that you likely won't be able to do alone unless you have just a couple shrubs hanging out um, on your property that you could easily remove and hopefully never have to deal with again.